Hey everyone, and welcome to Workstation Wednesday. I am Tracy King. I am the music teacher that blogs at mrskingrocks.blogspot.com. You can also find me on Twitter as Tracy King and on Instagram as the Bulletin Board Lady. On Teachers Pay Teachers, I am the Bulletin Board Lady Tracy King, and you can find me in all of those places and find some of the resources that I talk about here on Workstation Wednesdays. For um, this episode, we're going to talk about this cool idea for a workstation that just takes a few minutes to put together and can really be a fun and engaging workstation for your students. It is a Don't Break the Ice workstation. So if you can see from what I have here, I purchased the board game Don't Break the Ice, which let me show you that box. Looks like this. Actually, I purchased several of these games and I turned it into something that I can use in my music class. So I'm going to share with you a few ideas about how to do that and then link you up with a freebie so that you can print some spinners and maybe uh, try this station for yourself. So the board game Don't Break the Ice is um, the one where you have the little plastic ice blocks and you put them all together and you try to hammer out um, the blocks without making the whole thing crash and breaking all of the ice. These are pretty inexpensive um, at Walmart and Target and places like this, but if you can hold out until closer to Christmas times, often this is one of those Black Friday deals that you can get for like four or five dollars at different places. So it might be that you could pick up four or five of these and make several different kinds of work workstations at the same time. So um, I use this workstation and I have used it first grade through sixth grade. With my first graders, we used it to um, practice ta and rest patterns. Um, we used it for note recognition, like, you know, tap a quarter note or tap the half notes or, or something like that. Um, with the older kids, we um, have done all sorts of different things. I've put names of instruments on them and then they've spun to see what instrument family and they had to find an instrument within that family and hammer it out without breaking the ice. Um, but when I first got started with, with it, um, I didn't have a fancy schmancy spinner. Um, and that's really, I guess you could do that with cards. You could make cards and they could just turn over the card and whatever, like if it said whole note on the card, they would find a whole note on the game piece and hammer that one out. But <laughs> what I did, because, you know, last minute planning and all that is I just took a piece of paper and I drew a circle and divided it into um, different sections. And then my spinner was taking a large paper clip. I wonder if I can hold this so that you can see it enough. And a pencil to hold it in place. And then the kids would just flick it and spin it around. So they would lay it on the floor and do that. And that way I could make a spinner in like less than a minute for whatever subject we were playing the game on or however that worked. So um, that's kind of my go-to even now because sometimes I'll, you know, although I have different sets made, I may want them to do something just a little bit different with it. So I, I make these kinds of spinners all the time for workstation. So let me give you a closer look. I'm going to take this little skater guy. He's the one that's on the big block in the middle, but I'm going to take him off. And I want to show you one version of the game. So in this game, um, I believe that I used this with second grade. We were practicing patterns with ta and tt and half notes. Half notes was kind of a new thing that we were working on. And so what they did in this one, they didn't need a spinner in this one. What they did is they picked one of the rhythms that they knew and that they could clap. They knew they could do it really well. So I'm going to say like maybe uh, this one. Ta, ah, ta, ah, and they would clap it and say it. And if their group agreed, yes, you did that one right, then they got to hammer out that piece. And then it was the next person's turn and they could pick one of the patterns that they knew and they could um, clap and say that one. If the group all gave them thumbs up, then they would go and they would tap that one and you would just keep going and keep going until um, somebody finally broke the ice. 
So this was a great engaging workstation. Um, I've even done it as small groups where every group had a different version of Don't Break the Ice and we would play each version for like 10 minutes and then we would switch, which was um, a little less chaotic than um, putting this in as a workstation and you know, I, I usually, my workstations are usually six to seven minutes and sometimes it takes a good 10 minutes to do this. So depending. And then before the kids move from that station, they would just turn the game over and then push the blocks back into the spaces where um, they would go. And of course, if the whole thing broke, then they would all work together to get all of the pieces um, back in. So that was one way that we played the game. Another way that we played was um, I used a spinner that already had the notes drawn in and on the blocks, I would write half note or quarter note. I would write out the word for that. And so they would spin and if it landed on a quarter note, they would have to go and find the words quarter note and that would be the block that they hammered out. Um, I'd already explained the instrument one where I would put different instrument names on the blocks and then they would spin a spinner that said um, brass, woodwinds, percussion, string, whatever it land on. Oh, it's a string family. I need to go find a string instrument and hammer that instrument out. Um, also, I've done it with... Um, uh, dynamics and I think you've told you before never really um, have like great activities for dynamics so I'm always trying to pull some things in and really um, come up with ways for them to review those terms rather than just randomly when um, I point them out in the music that we're doing so on the blocks I would write M or PP or FF or draw or decrescendo or crescendo and then the spinner would have um, those words like um, piano, pianissimo, or soft, or very soft, or, or whatever it is, however it is that you wanted them to practice, they could do that. So um, I don't use any crazy high-tech way to mark these. I just take a permanent marker because I picked up a lot of these games for just a few bucks. I don't feel bad about just writing on them with whatever I'm going to do. Um, Shelly Tomich from uh, Pitch Publications has um, a set where you add Velcro dots to the block and then you can Velcro different sets on. So she's got like a set for rhythms and a set for dynamics and different things like that. And you can just, um, once you set it all up and you've laminated and cut it all out, then you can just change the same game. Um, I'm a little too lazy, so I just made the games and only just pull out the versions that I want. But she's got a really great bundle and I've linked to it in my um, resources up there. You can also do a quick Google search and you can see some other ways that other people are using Don't Break the Ice to make that happen as well. I have given up on storing everything in the Don't Break the Ice box because it's a little tricky for students to get the blue parts of it back in neatly and if they only have a minute or so to clean up, they need all of the time they can to get the ice box back in um, the tray. So I resorted to using these giganormous bags and I picked these up on clearance somewhere. I'm gonna show you the box just in case you can find them somewhere. They are from what well, looks like Home Essentials and it says heavy duty storage bags. This is um, This box contains three bags and they're the large size, but you can see that they come in extra large and extra, extra large. And these are really great for storing stations that are kind of bulky and weird. Um, I do still have the Don't Break the Ice boxes, but I, I really end up just dumping them into a bag because it's so much faster for them to be able to do this when we're cleaning up at the last rotation. So I have created um, a little freebie for you that has four different kinds of spinners. Sorry, I'm trying to clear all my don't break the ice pieces out of the way. Um, I created a freebie for you that has four different spinners and it tells you how to connect your, um, or connect 
the spinners to the game that you would buy. So there's a list of words or terms or notes or whatever that you should put on your blocks that kind of helps you set it up a little bit. And then these spinners are, let me turn you around, hello. These spinners look like this. And these are still the same kind of put the big clip and the pencil down and flick it. So these I would just either copy onto cardstock so they're sturdier than just a flat piece of paper or maybe regular piece of paper and laminate it. And um, you would still be able to get the... Um, the same effect and it would probably be just a little bit sturdier. So um, there's this one in the download and there's this one where the name or the the name of the note, the word name is there. So on the sheet, on the blocks that you were prepping, you would draw the actual notes. Um, this one is the dynamics ones. And so this has the dynamic words, de crescendo and pianissimo. And then on the board, you would put P and P, P and F and FF and draw the de crescendos and the crescendos. And the last one is the instrument family one that um, I like to use when my third graders do their um, instruments of the orchestra unit. So all of this is available to download and this is in the link that's up there to the resources. Um, there's also a link to a blog post I wrote a few weeks ago for Workstation Wednesday, which is 99 work music workstations you're going to love. And I hope that if you haven't had a chance to take a look at it, that you'll take a look tonight. There are tons and tons of ideas. Some are free, some are places to purchase, some you got to put a little work in to make them. But if you're looking for something maybe specifically to practice pitch or um, you want a singing workstation or something like that, please check out that list because I think that that will be really be a valuable resource for you. If you have any questions about Don't Break the Ice or anything that I've talked about tonight, go ahead and hit me up in the comments or you can contact me on any of those other social media outlets that I mentioned at the first of the video. And I hope you have a fabulous week and I will see you next week for Workstation Wednesdays.